Carolyn Moberly. Since last night at about 10 p.m., we received a report of a fishing boat that was with two adults and one child, and it was overdue. It was supposed to be back into um, the Ho-In area last night at 5 p.m., and at 10 p.m., when they still did not return, um, a family member reported them overdue. So at that time, we launched several assets, um, a boat from Coast Guard Station Portage in Houghton, as well as an aircraft from Traverse City. And the, um, our search effort continued all through last night and involved several other agency assets, um, including Michigan DNR, Michigan State Police, local fire and police. Canadian provided a C-130, and um, there were several other Coast Guard assets from Marquette, Traverse City, Detroit, Elizabeth City, North Carolina, and uh, of course our station there right in Houghton. So our searches throughout the day continued, and so far we have not had any results, but we continue to search, and we have efforts planned to continue throughout the night and into midday tomorrow, and we'll be reassessing our plan in the morning once we find out whether we have any new results. Okay, so explain to me how it works at night. I mean, I know you have got like, night vision or something, but explain to me, it gets more dangerous, I would assume. Um, well, we do have really good equipment for searching at night, and we have um, various risk mitigation um, things in place to make sure that our crews are safe. We have limits on how long our folks can be out searching, and so when they exceed their limit, we send them home and have a new crew come out that's fresh and rested. Um, we also do have night vision goggles, and we have uh, various sensors in, in the aircraft to detect heat or, you know, other radar and sensing capabilities um, to help them detect objects at night. We also plan our searches, so um, our our search area is, is tighter, it's, you know, a smaller area so that they're um, able to really um, keep their eyes focused on a, a smaller smaller area as they're searching to help their likelihood of detecting anything in the dark. I assume you're, like, trying to estimate, like, if the boat had floated without power, like waves, wind, all that? Yes, absolutely. We have a computer model that um, it... We put all of our assumptions in the model as far as when we believe the, the vessel got into trouble and where they could have been, and based on that information that we input and the object that we're looking for, whether it's a vessel or a person in the water, our computer models drift that information, and they look at the current and the winds to tell where the object we're looking for may have possibly been pushed to, and that way we can plan our searches according to where the object most likely has drifted to. And do you know that general area of Lake Superior, are we now talking about off the tip of the Keweenaw or not that far? Or Our efforts so far have been focused to the eastern, uh, the waters to the east of the eastern edge of the Keweenaw Peninsula. As time goes on, the chances of the objects drifting further into Lake Superior become more likely, and we will expand our search accordingly. Are wave conditions favorable for those on the boat right now? The waves have not been super significant, so um, the conditions have been favorable. They haven't been great. We have had some, some winds with some gusts up to 20 knots, but the weather has not been very bad, so you know, relatively, it's been it's been fair. Okay. Now, explain to me without identifying the people. Are we talking about two men and an eight-year-old boy? And and also describe the boat if you can. Um, it's it's two adults and one child, and the boat is a 14-foot open cabin fishing vessel with an outboard motor as well as a trolling motor. It is white with green trim. And what else? It seems to me like you guys are really pulling out all the stops, to use an old cliche. I mean, launching C-130s, uh, all these boats, all these assets? Absolutely. You know, it's it's a big area. Um, we do have cold water temperatures, 
and and we have the assets, so we're putting everything we can out there to help locate these individuals. Okay, is there anything I didn't ask you that you would like the public to know about this or what we should, you know, anything you'd like to say in wrapping it up? Uh, well, you know, we really appreciate the support of our partners, and and we would also just like to uh, make sure that people are keeping an eye out, and if the public notices anything that would help us in our search, to please report it to the U.S. Coast Guard as soon as possible.